eagle status. <laughs> Hallelujah. To fly above and beyond. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let's just bless the Lord a few moments. We want to bless the Lord a few moments. There's some things that I want to, to give and some words I need to say. I, uh, I heard this, just some different prophetic words I'm going to say today. And uh, I heard this, this was on the 7th. I wrote this down. It said, Noah's flood, the Philistine temple that fell, they cannot succeed. Hallelujah. You are hearing them shout their last shouts, roar their last roar, and control their last controllable avenue. For the roadblocks they have placed in the way are about to be moved today. You will hear of things that will absolutely astound you at what's going to happen. Amen. Pelosi fade away. Different ones just fade away like this. And when they do, the young lions that are in their place do not have what it takes to maintain such an evil reign. So they will begin to crumble. You young ones that have walked up into the place and you think you will pick up the baton, you are way out of your league now. I have said in times past, and the word is still there, that the squad will leave in a day. So everything's on its way out and on its way to leak out. To leak, yes, to leak out. Remember these words and remember today, says the Lord, for I have told you these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want to give you some, some I just want to give some keys today before I, I give this other prophetic word. This is something the Lord has, has placed upon me to give you. I want you to, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I want you to um, think about something a minute. Let me see if I can find this for you because I'd like for you just to see it straight out the word. Now, there's a, there's a lot of things that could be said right here. But I, I want to find something very specific for you. I'm just going to go ahead and, and by faith, by faith, you know, it's impossible to please God without faith. So I'm going to tell you something. And, uh, yeah, well, I'll tell them all of that. Is that what you want me to do? Okay. When the Lord came by Abram's house, he said, the thing we are about to do. He said, shall I hide from Abram, the, Abraham the thing we are about to do? This was not just Sodom and Gomorrah. But this, uh, that came after. This is Isaac coming. Sarah's aging process had been reversed. Until she was a virgin again, Abraham would be circumcised so that the seed would pass through the covenant mark into the virgin would eventually go to the top of Calvary to be offered, and there the substitute was seen. Shall I, I hide, or shall we hide the thing I'm about to do from Abraham? The thing was Jesus, the Son of God, that was coming. Then if you notice, Sodom and Gomorrah was mentioned on the way out. He followed them out. So the whole thing was revealed to him how it was going to happen. A virgin would conceive. This was even before Isaiah prophesied things like that. Now, I want you to see something. So already, already the Lord, you know, is doing some strange things, but he's revealing them to us and he's showing them to us. Now, I want to find something here. And I'm going, the Lord said to read you that so you'd have that revelation. Then I want to give you 
this one, or he does. I, you know, you can give nothing unless he shows it to you. But I want you to see in Genesis, let's see. We want to see Genesis, um, oh, yeah, let's, let's look at Genesis Forty, forty-four, yes, Genesis forty-four. That's a chapter you don't see much. You don't go there much. You know, people just don't go to Genesis. Genesis forty-four. Well, look at forty-four, and uh, I want you to watch this. Okay, this is when. Joseph had planted his cup in Benjamin's sack, you know, and he, he plants his cup there. And he's wanting to keep Benjamin with him. That's his whole plan. And he, so he, he shows them great kindness. They all leave. They're happy. They're frolicking through the desert, headed back to Jacob. And they're all happy because they've got food and they've got favor and everything worked out great. Jacob was concerned about uh, Benjamin going with them. He wasn't so much concerned about, you know, about um, him not having, I mean, not uh, Egypt keeping him. He was, he thought jo Benjamin's brothers may do something to him. Because Abra, I mean, uh, Jacob knew what they had done to Joseph. He knew they had done something to him. And he's, he was a prophet. He knew. And so he just you know, he was concerned. So, anyway, Joseph is planning all of this. He gets them there, and when he gets them there, watch what he does. He, he begins to put, he, he put his cup in Benjamin's sack. He sends out his guards after them. And behold, the money which we found our sacks, mouth we brought again, they told him, and all this. So, he said unto them, uh, they searched and began at the eldest in verse 12 and left at the youngest and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they rent their clothes and, and laid it every man his ass and returned to the city. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house. Notice now somebody is mentioned first here and he hasn't been mentioned before. Judah. Think about this. So Judah... Yeah, I'm trying to do about four different thoughts here right now. So somebody, they said, are you okay? Everything? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think about four different thoughts coming out right here. Now, watch this. So I'm going to focus in just on this now. So Judah and his brethren, verse 14, came to Joseph's house, for he was, he was uh, yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. So Joseph had waited at his own house while they were out there. They waited. He waited there because he knew they would be right back. So he knows what's going on. He gets them back there. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that you have done? What you not that such a man as I could certainly divine? And Judah said, What shall we say unto the Lord? Uh, uh, my Lord, what shall we speak or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the in, in iniquity of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. And he said, God forbid that I should do so, Joseph. But the man in whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my servant. And as for you get you up in peace unto your father. In other words, I don't want you guys. I just want him. Then Judah came near. Notice Judah's mentioned again. Came near unto him and said, O oh my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ear. Now Judah was not the eldest, but he was brought. He was the one speaking. He led them back everything. Judah had something in his mind. Let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father and loveth him. And thou saidest unto thy servants, Bring him down unto me, that I may uh, set mine eyes upon him. 
And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. With you, you shall see my face no more. And it came to pass when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. And our father said, Go again and buy us a little food. And we said, We cannot go down if our youngest brother be not with us. Uh, 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 if our youngest brother be with us, then we will go down, for we may not see the man's face except our younger brother, youngest brother uh, he be with us. And thy servant, my father, said unto us, You know that my wife bare me two sons. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. And I saw him not since. And if you take this also from me, and mischief befall him, Ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now therefore, when I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life, it shall come to pass when he seeth that the lad on the gray hairs of thy servant our father with sorrow to the grave. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, if I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now, therefore, I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my Lord. Let the lad go up with his brethren, for how shall I go up to my father and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. Now, notice this. He says, everybody listening, listen close now. I read all of that to tell you this. This was an impossible situation. This was something that was set up, and it was set up, and even it was a lie. Benjamin hadn't stole the cup. Uh, Joseph wasn't a diviner. He was trying to save his brother's life from those men. He wanted his brothers with him, his brother with him, Benjamin. But when the, this all took place, it was a rock and a hard place. He was between a rock and a hard place. He could not get forward in this situation. And Judah recognized it and led his brothers back, even though he wasn't the eldest. He led them back to see Joseph, and Joseph knew they would be right back because he planned it, so they're sitting there. Now watch this. Something very powerful is revealed to us here. He comes back into Joseph's presence and he said, I can't go back to my father without the lad. He said, so take me instead and let the lad go back to his father. Take me instead and let the lad go back. Now watch. You ready? He said, take me. No, we're not there yet. Just, just watch. Oh, this is one of those, this is one of those nail biters where you got to get, you, go, you know, you, you, got to, you got to get ready for this. Look at Psalm 8 real quickly now. We can't just reveal this. We got to tell you something here. Watch what he says here. He says, you ready? Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest stop the enemy and the avenger and the bad harvest. Judah means praise. Judah said, take me instead of the lad. It was revealed in Psalm 8, Jesus interpreted Psalm 8 as out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained praise. What we've been revealed here is this. When you're between a rock and a hard place, there's no way out. I don't care what lies been told. I don't care what's been set up against you. I don't care what evil manipulative government has done, what they've done. We're about to unleash a secret from the spirit of the living God. And what that secret is, is this right here. If you start to praise God, watch, your praise takes your place. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. 
Your praise will take your place. It will take your place. Your praise will step up and take the bad harvest for you. It will take the avenger for you. It will, it will take your place. Now do you see why I had to read the whole chapter? I've never taught that before, so it took me a few minutes to set it up in my thinking. I, I had to get here. So notice what's happening here. Your praise will take your place. So no matter what punishment you think that you're about to endure, no matter what's about to come near you, no wonder it scared the enemy in Psalm 8 and he protested because out of the mouth of a babe and a suckling, Jesus said you've ordained praise that you could stop the enemy and the bad harvest. So once you throw your hands up and you don't know what to do, Brother Hagin used to say, take the praise cure. So once you just start throwing up your hands and praising God, whether it's your health, your finances, your, uh, you've been set up no matter what's going on. Some of you in prison right now are innocent of the crime they said you did and you were set up and you've been locked away, but the praise will take your place. So we have to begin to praise God and praise walks up between the bad harvest and you and Judah says, I will take his place. The lad can go home. Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on. Now that, that's rich right there because it's a secret. Is our partners getting it? Are they getting that? Do they have that? I wanted, I didn't teach that anywhere else. I want our partners to hear it. Because whatever you're facing, your praise is ready, watch, and able and equipped to take your place. When Jesus was on the cross in Psalm 22, let's go over there. I want to show you that. We, we hit the vein of it now, so let's just keep moving there. Now watch this in Psalm 22. Jesus is on the cross and he's praying this in other tongues. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, or bachthani. He's, 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 he's speaking in other tongues. The Hebrews were standing there. They didn't know what it said. The, 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 the Italians were standing there. They didn't know what it said. The Aramaic people was there. They didn't know what he said. But the scripture said it had to be interpreted. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He's not saying you've run off and left me, God. My father is not. He's not with me anymore. Because he said before, he knows. He said, I know you're always with me. What he's saying is I'm the fulfillment of this psalm. And then the psalm is the crucifixion psalm. They pierce his hands and feet. They part his garments. They cast lots for his clothing. All through here. But watch what he says here. He starts talking about things like that. He said... I cry, uh, my, uh, why art thou so far from helping me from the words of my roaring? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, verse 2, but thou hearest not in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. That's a Tehillah praise. Do you know that? That's the word Tehillah. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I'm a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. The Lord said to stop right here and tell you something. The praise that takes your place is Tehillah praise. The praise that takes your place, if you don't know what else to say, start praising him from down in here somewhere. Just let it come up out of you. Don't just, just, don't just say something that you've heard. Just start praising him out of your own spirit. That's a Tehillah praise. It don't have to be a Tehillah song. It may be, but it's a Tehillah praise. You're just praising him. Oh, God, you're so rich. You're so wonderful. It's just coming up out of you. You're declaring his goodness. And some of you will praise him in tongues. You'll praise him and you'll just begin to dance and praise him. Your praise is leading you back to where it's taking you and saying you don't have to be afraid of the entrapment. You don't have to be afraid of what's been uh, alleged against you. You don't have to be afraid of this. I praise, am ready and willing 
to take your place. Why is that? Because they can't hold praise. Notice he didn't take Judah because you can't hold praise. You can't keep it back. You can't hold it. <laughs> Amen. So he says, our fathers trusted in thee, in verse 4, they trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I'm a worm and no man is talking about he's been become a bloody grub here. He's a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. That's what they were doing in front of him. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying he trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. So now you've got hope. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. The word trouble is near actually is a feminine word, and it's talking about there is a, it talks about a, a, an adversary, a female adversary. He's talking about the enemy has come to take my bride. This is actually what he's speaking about. He's come to take the people. He said, there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan. These are the, these are the spirits that, that created giants. Bashan runs all the way to Goliath. He said, they've come. They've beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. All this is happening on the cross. I'm poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint, not broken, out of joint. My heart is like wax. His heart is bursting inside him. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. All of his strength is leaving. His tongue cleaves to his jaws. It's sticking to each side of his mouth because he's so dehydrated. And it's probably about this thick by this time. And he says, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. And my feet, and they tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Be not, but be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, hasty to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog, his bride. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. That's a hallel praise, a scripted praise. Yet that fear, ye that fear the Lord, praise him. And all ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. He's saying all of this in other tongues now. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from sin. But when he cried unto him, he heard my praise. So he's praising him. This is a Tehillah praise, this word. Shall be of thee, my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him, your heart shall live forever. Notice all of this. How many times has praise been mentioned? It was praise that he put forth because he was innocent. He became our sin. He never committed a sin. And the only thing that could free him, his word released in his praise. And he began to praise. And praise stepped up and said, he must go home. So think about what you have. You have at your disposal. No wonder Satan uh, came to the Lord and protested in the 8th Psalm and said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. He was earnestly protesting that you've made him a little lower than you. Out of his very mouth, out of his babies and the sucklings of the, the minute they can nurse from their mother's milk, they're releasing a sound that stops the enemy and the avenger. Jesus said it was praise. 
So once praise steps up. From the very beginning, a baby from the time it nurses is calling for praise to take its ply. That Satan had to figure out a way to kill the unborn before it can nurse. By the time uh, its mother's milk, that's what the 8th Psalm is speaking of in translation. The nursing of the milk. From the time it can suck the milk, it releases a praise. So all those cooing cute sounds you hear. All of that that you hear may not be because they're just so overwhelmed by you. A lot of times it's love for you, but a lot of times it's praise for their God coming out of their mouth. And you have no idea. Babies see angels. They see, they see the power of God. Jesus can walk up to one of them and they don't freak out. And so they know his, his praise moves the enemy. And stops the avenger and steps up. You don't know how many times that praise has probably saved families' lives. Hallelujah. So the praise of God is ready, willing, and able to take your place. So no matter what you're facing today, start saying it. Praise has come to take my place. Praise out of my mouth and just start praising God. And out of my mouth. Praise has stepped up and moved me out of the way and said, take me instead of the lad. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was being offered on that cross and he was being sacrificed on the cross, his praise became a substitute for you and I. He showed us how to use that powerful thing. We need to begin to praise we praise Jesus for what he did. And he released his word of what he would do and how he would be delivered in his prayer and his praise. He did it all covertly. He did it all to be interpreted in the spirit. And so now you, he released deliverance in praise. So now all you have to do is begin to praise God. No wonder Brother Hagin said, take the praise cure. He said, I've seen things when nobody knew what else to do. He said, if you don't know what else to do, then take the praise cure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, that was what I was supposed to tell you. Amen. That's, that's awesome, is it not? Yeah. Robin, if you'll come to the piano now, I want to, to give these other prophetic words. You know, the, you, you're looking at all you've got to do here and all you've got to say. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes. All right, Lord. Do I, says the Lord, let the words of the prophets go? That they never come to pass? Nay, says the Lord, I will not, lest the enemy say they have no God. I will avenge their words. Not just present day prophets, but prophets of old. For they are all one guild, says the Lord. Watch what I do. Watch what I do and judge for yourselves whose side I'm on. I sent my servants, the prophets, to you, and you did them no different than your spiritual forefathers. He's talking to this wicked political regimes and all of the others that have come against the prophets. You sawed them asunder, you fed them to lions, and utterly attempted to destroy them. But like those of old, the same fate awaits you, says the Lord. Behold, the wind begins to dry the earth of your corrupt semen, for you will never be allowed to propagate. Watch what I do next, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Good is the word of the Lord. Good is the word of the Lord. We esteem the word of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask you to let these prophetic words that were spoken today, let the teaching of your word spoken today sink deep in the hearts of the people, that it grow up and become greater than any problem they face. And I give you praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take courage, brother and sister. Remember when the Lord said, whatever you see in November, do not be discouraged because God is going to do something. Something is shaping up bigger than we know. People are getting ready to be replaced. People are getting ready to fade away because all of this will shortly start coming to pass. For the Lord's hand is not slack concerning his promises whatever he has said he is able and capable and willing to perform amen god is god and he's looking at the earth right now i don't know i saw that he's he's looking at the earth he's got the earth in his gaze right now and he's watching wicked people and he's watching godly people and he's watching money. He's watching wealth. He's watching as the world's corrupt system is trying to steal your wealth. He's watching this right now. But there is the promise of the widow's might. Because no matter what, she gave more than everyone else. And so everything in that offering was accounted to her as if she had given it. So this is what I'm hearing the Lord say. I hear him say this, that he is watching that. And your giving has not gone unnoticed. And these wicked people will not steal it from you. I'm going to caution someone one more time about this. And you need to listen to me. You really need to take heed. Some of you, on those ships that are holding back supply from God's people. Do you actually think that the American people are stupid? Do you think they're dumb as a bag of rocks? Do you think the people of the nations of the world are dumb and really believe there's no workers on the docks to unload these ships? You're trying to create a scarcity crisis, and you know it. The Lord has given me that word way back. And, I, and then I told you and gave the word that there would be another crisis with ships. Anybody remember that? And now there they are. But the Lord says this. He's not just holding the wicked politicians accountable for this. He's holding you captains of the ships. You're, co you're, you're being a cohort to these people. And you're willing to sacrifice the lives of my people for gain. You will be like the captain when the flood starts on whom the king leaned. When, when the abundance comes through the gate, you'll see it with your eyes, but you'll not partake of it. And that Lord on whose hand the king leaned will ship around and move it somewhere and get my people those supplies, says the Lord. For you are just doing this for money and you're worse than an abortionist. Enjoy your Vegas trips for I can crush the slot machine at the move of my hand. And I am causing revival to come and some of these places will close down. 
I hear the Lord said, I am, and I'm putting it in my words here because I don't, I don't hear another word about this. I'm, I'm tired of Vegas being called Sin City. I am going to call it Saint City and Saved City. Take heed. There are several words that I cannot say. Words concerning national security. So I send this word to Donald Trump. Call me. Hallelujah. And I will tell you. Hallelujah. How we bless the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord. There is a general listening. You should call me. You should call me. But don't have corrupt advisors call me. Because they don't love you. I do. Now, how we bless the Lord. Let's just bless Him. Come on, let's just thank Him. How we thank the Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, I... I carry this staff at the direction of the Lord. This staff with the eagle's head and the seal of the nation on the front of it. And I carry this staff as a prophet in the United States. But I'm a prophet to the nations and I'm a prophet of Jerusalem. And this is the face, one of the four faces that's around the throne of God. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it goes around his throne. And these faces he will never have out of his gaze. And this nation was founded because we loved Jesus. Israel was founded because God loved, Jesus loved them. The only two nations created on the love of God. Yes. The Megan David, the symbol of covenant, the eagle of this nation, the symbol of covenant. God will not forsake us. And people are, Lord, behold their threatenings. We speak the word of God with boldness. You're about to see a fire come out of God's people's mouths and the mouths of the prophets that will consume anything in front of it. You're about to see the words released with such power, with the roar of a lion. For it's the time of the lion. It's the time of the lion right now. After the time of the lion, I can tell you the next time that's coming, but right now it's the time of the lion. And I carry the staff of the eagle. It represents the resurrected Christ. And resurrection power is coming to God's people. From the lowest villages to the highest skyscrapers, revival is coming. Amen. So look for dictators to be removed, people to fade away. Some will just simply step off the scene. Remember the word of the Lord at the first of this program today. Noah's flood, the Philistines' temple that fell in Samson's day, and so shall shall not succeed. And I'm going to tell you this now, and this is the prophetic word the Lord had me to give and he brought it to my, back to my thinking just now. And I'm supposed to give this, so here it is. The Red Sea has closed. Have you not noticed it? That suddenly after October 4th, when the Red Sea was ordered to close, when the prophets of the Lord were in D.C. and everything shaped up in D.C., suddenly the Republican Party, because I have to find something. If it's here in my notes... Our partners need to hear this. I am to tell you something. So just stay with me. Now, you 
Yes. We are in the time, we are in the time on the other side of the Red Sea. Where we are, we are headed, moving toward our promises on the other side of the Red Sea because it's closing. Did you not notice the Republican Party? So, what was it? A truck driver won a, won a Senate position in his district and he spent 150 bucks, $151 on his campaign. That's how much you are despised, Democratic Party. Uh, on a Jolly Rancher. Just throw out a couple of Jolly Ranchers and, you know. Here is the thing. Nobody voted for you, Joe, in the scheme of things. You, you may not know it because you were too gaslighted, but everybody else knew it. Everybody knew that. Everybody knew. Everybody's got sense enough to know that. The party surely knows it. But, but here, here is the thing. Did the Republican Party, all of a sudden they when the Lord lets me find that prophecy, I'll tell you why that is. But until then, I am to tell you this. We're on the other side of the sea, and we're moving toward the promises. Yes. I want to tell you something. I've just got to find it. There's so many things. I ride in the dark a lot. I do, you know, you just start riding as the Lord tells you. Yes, yes, we gave that. Yes, yes, we gave that. Yes, Lord. So we are, it's the fight against the giants, all the giants. Now, now listen close what I'm saying. All the giants. Facebook was Goliath. He fell on his Facebook. And then Israel launched an investigation against him, against Facebook, for inciting terrorism. That's where Goliath fell. That's not prophetic, prophetic enough. The rest of the tech giants will run now. But here's what the Lord said. But we are now battling the giant Og. Og. Og, the giant giant. The, the, the one of the originals who had the, the, uh, was Og, that had the 18-foot bed, eight feet wide. The Lord said, Og, Goliath was Facebook, a little giant. Og is the Democrat Party into now. And so now we are moving on the other side of the Red Sea encountering Og. We're going to get into fights now where you have to hold the prophet's hands up. The people are going to hands up. As long as Moses' hands was up, Moses' prayer was way more, way more fearful to the enemy than Joshua's sword. Because as long as Moses' hands was up, as long as he held the staff up his, or held his hands up, as long as the prophets stood and they held his hands up, they would win. When the prophets' hands started coming down, they would begin to lose. And so they figured this out real quick. So two men grabbed his arms, held him up, and slid a rock under him so he could sit down and hold his hands up. He held them up all day. The prayer of the prophets. You must hold up the prophets right now. 
while you are in the field. Hallelujah. We are in that place. And all the people, all the people that, that filed petitions against the prophets, trying to make prophets apologize, trying to, you, you listen to this. You tried to regulate the prophets? You just think about that just a minute. You tried to regulate the prophets? The Lord had given a word about that. And if I can find it, I'll read it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, y'all. This program's as real as it gets. It's just as real as it gets. But people try to, to regulate the prophets. They tried to. You tried to regulate the prophets by your own doctrines. What you believed was true. How you were raised in church is the way it had to be. On your suffering doctrines, you said we must regulate the prophets, force them to sign into our doctrine. Well, hello. No. Now, Yeah, yeah, I really would like to find this for you. But those that tried to regulate the prophets, here's what you have to do now. It's time for you and all the other prophets that bought into such trash to begin to come out of the caves, go down by the, the Jordan and begin to build your houses again. It's time for you to come out now. Come out now. No one's angry. No one's mad. Just come on out and start building your houses down by. You've already made Elisha ashamed enough that he'll go with you. That anointing will go with you to the Jordan. So come on out. Start building your houses. Why? Because the Lord wants to free you from something. He's going to free you from the control of other men. When that axe head flew off into that water, that prophet owed somebody something for that. And he cried to Elisha, and Elisha said, bring me a stick. And he took the staff he held in his hands in that prophetic charged hand of his, and he put it in the water, threw it where the axe head fell, and it came up out of the mud and swam back up to the top. And all your anointings are buried under that Jordan. Controlled by men. He's going to bring it back up to the top and let you swim again. Let it all work again. Get out of the caves. See all the prophets, all the people that said, make the prophets sign. Make the prophets sign a petition. It's amazing at one point, I think the big number on that was 50 that made them sign. And they signed. And it was those same numbers that followed Elijah and Elisha all the way to the Jordan. And it was the same number that told Elisha, go up thou bald head. Go up thou bald head. Bald head didn't mean he didn't have hair. It mostly meant there was a time when the word bald head was used for white hair. Because it was white. And another was a covering. And they mocked him and they mocked him. And that's all, the, that's all they did, sign this petition. Because there's no way Jezebel will get eaten by dogs by the wall. Sign that. There's no way. Apologize. Go ahead and apologize. Well, no! How about that? Just so you can hear me again. No! Because you are wrong. If this had no meaning to it and no prophet standing speaking today was, <coughs> if they were all wrong, why don't it go away? How come it hasn't ever faded away? 
How come it's still a fight? Are we still debating all of this? Folks, it would have already passed. You keep your doctrines. You keep your doctrines, but I'll tell you what, you are going to answer for trying to regulate the Lord's prophets. You, with your big educations, you're going to answer for trying to regulate a prophet of the Lord and telling a prophet of the Lord that what God said is not true, but what you said is true. You're in trouble. You're in trouble now. Let them out of the caves. Let them out where they can go on down to the Jordan and, and be restored. Hallelujah. Because when this whole thing turns, and it will turn, and when it turns, and everyone who thought they were so beautiful, beautiful, their feet are covered with the blood of the owner. And when all of this turns, and you see what kind of corruption was involved, you remember that. You remember it because I see some people are, that tried to just come against the prophets, that tried to destroy the prophets. I don't mean just come against them, to destroy them. Or like the prophet that told Ahab. said, no, go on out and fight. Go on out and fight. And Micaiah said, you, if I'm not even a real prophet, if you return from that battle. And the other guy slapped him in the mouth to shut that prophet up. And he said, because he said, I saw a spirit stand by the Lord and said, I'll go down and be a lying spirit in his mouth. And the Lord said to, that, to his court, not, not God, God in his system of government. This was being passed down in the court. And the Lord, the Lord, all capitals said, who will go and, and lure him into battle? Because Ahab's harvest had come. And he had taken every precaution. He even changed clothes with someone else. So he wouldn't look like the king. And he said, who will go down and make him and, and, and lure him? And a spirit stepped up and said, I will go, Lord. I'll be a lying spirit in his, in his prophet's mouths. And that prophet said, which way did the spirit of the Lord come from me? And he slapped the prophet. Which way did it go from me? And the prophet of the Lord said, you'll remember this the day you go into a room inside a room and hide yourself. Well, they have in battle, everything's going well, and suddenly an archer at a venture, just he wasn't even aiming at nobody, just pulled his bow and let it go, and it hit him in the, in the joints of the armor at the only And when they went back, he was, he never went back to the alive. Now you just think on that. He managed to hold himself up to the end of the day, but then they were told, all those other prophets, it happened. It happened. Elisha sent someone to anoint Jehu. Jehu became the king. Jezebel was thrown off the wall, and the dogs ate her. All that was left was her head, her hands, and her feet. Her ideas, her work, and her walk. That's all that was left. So that the prophecy of Elijah could be fulfilled, the dogs would eat her by the wall. And he also said the dogs would lick up Ahab's blood by the wall. And it did. When all this turns... You're going to look and say, as you hide yourself in a room, in a room, and say, my God, it happened. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Hallelujah. Take courage, warriors, for your best days are still ahead. Your best days are still ahead. This is not the time for the destruction of the free world. This is not the time for the vaccine to destroy a race of people, a group of, of people. It's not the time yet. Satan wants to push it into time so he can make one word, one jot, or one cross of the T not come to pass. 
but he's not going to do it. So stay, stand firm, stand strong, keep praising. Put praise between you and any harvest that comes against you. Put praise between you. I will, Lord. Thank you for reminding me of that. Someone has been defrauded and it has something to do with it. I don't know if it's a public school. I'm not sure what kind of school, but the Lord says that you've been the money, something about money taken from you. It has to do with the school. The Lord's going to intervene in that. Put your praise in its place, and it cannot destroy you. It'll have to come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, and I know this has been a wild, it's been a wild ride today on the 11th hour. I went from one thing to another thing to another thing. But you know, when you got, when you got all of that you got to say, and all this stuff is, you, you just keep going till you get it said. Amen. It's, uh, our 11th hour partners, they're all here today. Who we got watching today from around the world, just nod your head around the world. Hallelujah. That's because they know that we love them and we love all of our partners. I pray over you. I was praying over you last night. I'll be praying over you today. All of our partners from around the world. I, I love Joseph's coat of the many colors. I love Jacob's speckled and spotted sheep. All colors and all from everywhere. Man, that's the strong right there. Amen. <laughs> all right. Well, come on, Krista. And, uh, oh, Roxanne today. Oh, praise reports. Oh, well, come on and give us a praise report. I'd like to hear some of those. Okay, just give him just a moment. All right, go. All right. We had uh, still multiple coming in this week about family members coming home. Estranged sons and daughters all of a sudden picking up the phone and calling their their mother or their father. Didn't it's, I say that again Sunday? Yeah. There's been there's been quite a few of those come in through email where they've they've had a strange step yeah. or call. Yeah, we said that again Sunday. The yes. Lord gave that word again. He's putting families back together. That's exactly right. Um, we had a few come in that really <coughs> caught my eye. Um, some of them are lengthy, but I'll, I'll summarize some of these. A lady wrote in and said her daughter had came by with her new baby. It's her grandson. He's two months old. And uh, ele the eleventh hour was playing on the TV. She's a partner. Wow. And uh, he had been having belly troubles with reflux and things like that. He was he hasn't been able to feed well or digest anything easy. So he's been really, really yeah. uncomfortable. And she said he was crying and he was fussing and he was laying uh, next to her. He had this belly pain. Then all of a sudden he heard the eleventh hour on TV, and he got completely still. He turned his little head toward the television and stared right at Prophet Robin. And she said, with laser vision, he just went completely quiet. All the crying, the fussiness just stopped, and his little body was at peace. <laughs> but they had prayed over him and spoke over him that he was a prophet. His name is Zachary. So wow. they had prayed that over him. But she said when he saw the prophet on TV, prophet he, became, Zachary. Yes, he became completely still, and he, all the fussiness Hallelujah. stopped. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord for little Zachary. Also, yes. there was a word given, and it says on September 14th, they were watching the 11th hour, um, and you gave a word out that someone was getting a new Ford motor car. Yes, remember I remember that. that. And uh, so <coughs> they, she spoke out loud and said, amen, be it unto me, for my husband and I were praying about getting a new vehicle. So she wrote it down on her notepad on her phone and said uh, what the word was, someone's getting a new Ford motor car, and she put, amen, be it unto me, next to it. So that same day on September 14th, uh, without her knowing it, her husband was at work, um, he ended up putting in an order for a new product build of Ford, and it's a new uh, first-of-its-kind pickup, and they took possession of it on October 30th of this year. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a one-of-a-kind vehicle they one got. One of a, a new kind. Ford. Yes. And the Lord said a new Ford motor car. Yes. Um, wow. And also, I wanted to, to um, share this with you. A new one, a new kind. Yes. Yeah, one of a kind. <laughs> new so product. So it's not just a new one, it's a new kind. Yes, yes. Wow. And I do believe you said this on the Elijah stream. Um, a lady was listening, and at the end of the broadcast, or it might have been on the 11th hour, where you had prayed for women who had had an abortion, who had asked for forgiveness over and yeah. over. She said, I was one of those women, and that day I felt the love and forgiveness of God for the first time in <laughs> over 40 Hallelujah. years. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, that is so good. Well, she is forgiven. 
And the Lord is, you know, in everything, that family will be reunited one day. Hallelujah. So it's, it's been a good 11th hour today, hasn't it? Yes. So Krista, come on and talk to the people and, and tell them how to, whatever the Lord tells you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we want to thank you all for tuning in with us again today on the 11th hour. We really do cherish this time together and all of our, our family, our 11th hour family from around the world, from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around. We love you so much. And one day we will get to come and be with you in person. And if if you get a chance to come be with us in person before then, come on on a Sunday morning or if we have a special event somewhere, be, be checking the, the website, robindbullock.com for the itinerary about where we're going to be and, and when we're going to be there. So, and if we're in your area, come see us. We, we would love to, to be with you in person someday. And uh, also remember um, our partner letter, our very first partner letter. This one's going to kind of be like a, a magazine because we have waited so long to be able to do this. And so we, wanna, we want our first one to, to really uh, be special for all of you. So make sure that you're signed up to be a partner on robindbullock.com. All of this information is on the website. You click the tab at the top of the screen that says um, Elite Warriors Partnership, and you can fill out that form, and it'll go out December 1st. So make sure it's not out right now. So don't, don't be looking for it or send an email saying, I can't find the link. It's not out yet. December 1st it will be sent out so make sure you're signed up for that and then you will receive one every month from then on and we are so excited to get that to you but as you're uh, getting your offering together today and those of you that want to give remember there's a few ways that you can do that robindbullock.com hit the donations tab at the top of the screen if you're watching by YouTube the link is in the description and also if you want to mail it in the address is on the screen and we also have text to give. Now, if this goes away from the screen, you can always go back to the website, robindbullock.com, and find all of that information from there. So we, we want to make sure that, that you have the opportunity to do so if you want to. But as, as you're getting that together, uh, this morning, the Lord, I, I, re I heard myself say, in the in the spirit i heard myself say well i really don't have much to say over the offering today and i thought well that's strange i usually have something to say but i truly believe the offering was in the worship today it was in the worship the message was in the worship it was all about calling that prosperity to your house it was all about calling that prosperity to your church to your ministry and wherever to your job you you can call it to wherever that applies to you to your household to your family to your job to your ministry to your church Call that in. If you forgot, because I know a lot has been spoken today on the, on the program, but if you forgot what was said, go back and rewatch it. Go back and re-listen to it. Listen to what was said, because God was, he was speaking. He, you know, he always speaks from the future anyways. That's where he speaks from, because that's where he's at, is in the future. And I just dropped a candle off this <laughs> but I got it I picked it up but he calls you from the future that that was he knew I was going to do that in the future too he was like Krista put your arm down but <laughs> he uh he calls you from the future and he wants you to know that prosperity is in your future and he was speaking that from the future during the worship 
He was speaking the offering message in the worship. He's letting you know, call that into your future because that's where, where it's at. And I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your best days are ahead of you. They're not behind you. Dad said it just a few minutes ago. Your best days are ahead of you. They're not behind you. So quit looking back. You know, yesterday, I encourage you to go back and listen to the intelligence briefing on the Elijah stream yesterday. It was all about, he started out in the, the beginning talking about people living in the past, living and, and, and dwelling in the past and, and going back and living in these memories whether good or bad, it's not there anymore. It's, it's nice to have good memories. And yes, we can remember. And there's, there's loved ones that's gone on that we want to remember and things like that. But you can't live there because, because it's gone. You have to continue moving on. If those loved ones were born again and knew Jesus, you'll see them again one day. So keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Don't, don't go back in the past. Don't live there because it'll start sucking your, your present, the life that God has given you right now. It'll start sucking it out of you and having to give life to the past. And eventually, you're giving all your life to the past, too, and you've got to replace it. And so... Don't stay there. So go, don't, don't think about the, what the enemy has did, what he stole from you in the past financially. Don't be living in that constantly. Think about what God has waiting for you in your future. He has it waiting for you in your future. One of my favorite phrases of all time is you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. And so you need Need to start calling that in into your futures and go back and listen to what God had to say about your prosperity today in the worship and begin to praise and begin to worship remember because praise takes your place and so what what's going on in your finances start begin to praise because that'll take your place and you'll start you're, you're gonna start walking where your head is before long amen Amen. Well, I want to pray over your giving today. I know I said I didn't have anything to say, but it just, just kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> just kind of came out. <laughs> and so, so I just want to pray over your giving today. And I hope you're, I hope you're all joyful today. I hope you're all laughing. I hope you're all rejoicing in the Lord. Because it's a joyful time. What a time to be alive, you know? My jacket says victory on it. There's victory. Think victory. There's victory in your life. What God has ahead of you. Mm, I just can't. I, I just can't wait to hear about it. Amen. Amen. Yes, please tell us. Please write to us. So say it with me. I know you know it. Luke 638. Give and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto my bosom, for with the same measure that I meet with all, it shall be measured to me again. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen, so be it. Now, if you're a tither, you quote it with me. I know you know it. Malachi 3.10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call me blessed, for I shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. So be it. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You know, I, uh, I was sitting over there listening, and I was just looking right here, and here's that word that I couldn't find a while ago. And this is what the Lord had said. He said to the self-appointed regulators of the Lord's prophets. Now think about that. To the self-appointed regulators of the Lord's prophets. Those who self-appointed themselves to regulate prophets got mad, first of all, because people, you know, we in the South say mad, it's angry, you know, maybe. They got upset, got angry, got mad. I still say that sounds right. That to regulate prophets got mad, first of all, because people believed in these again. They got mad, first of all, because people believed in them again. So now they can't just come out and say they don't exist because of the fear of the people. So they seek to regulate them, and they regulate them according to their doctrine. And that's what the Lord said. So even those can, you seriously could repent. And um, nobody could have done worse than Paul. And he repented. <clears throat> so anyway, it's been a good time on the 11th hour, has it not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, a lot came out today. We gave a lot out today. I can sense it now that the anointing's kind of lifting. I can sense it in me, man. I, we gave out today. <clears throat> now, I want you to, to remember this. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Just simply pray this. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From this day forward, you are my Lord. Hallelujah. Now, and if somebody asks you, are you a, are you a Christian? Say yes. Yes, I am. Yes, I belong to Jesus. I belong to the Christ. Amen. Now, <clears throat> you don't need to stop there. Once you're born again, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost so that the power can come up on you for service. So you simply say this, Lord Jesus, I believe I can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Baptize me now, Lord, in the mighty Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say. I thank you for it. I give you praise and honor for it. In Jesus' name. Now I'm just going to thank you, Lord, for baptizing me. And then when you hear those sounds in you, just begin to let them out of your mouth. <speaking in Spanish> And just start flowing out in the spirit like that. And what you've done is you've shown the initial evidence, not the only evidence, but the initial evidence of being baptized in the mighty Holy Ghost. And that is yielding the most powerful member of your being, your tongue. And you've yielded that to God and you're trusting him for every syllable. And the book of Jude says that you build up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. What is most holy faith? Most holy faith is faith that gets the answer every time. Every time. So the more you pray in tongues, the more you get the answer. And the more faith comes. Holy faith. Hallelujah. And you'll be praying mysteries hidden in God. Amen. Praise God. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today, as we said. It's been a good time to be together here around God's Word, around the anointing. Remember the songs like Krista said. Go back and listen to the words of prosperity that was given, that was written standing here at the keyboard. It was just written right here as that music started coming out. Go back and experience all that again. Tell somebody else to listen to it. Tell people, say, man, you've got to get in on all this. And let them flow in the Holy Ghost. 
young prophets. I remember young Henrik and the little baby Henrik that got healed staring at the screen. Two little children sent us prophets, young prophets of the Lord. What about um, who, uh, uh, what, uh, Micah, uh, what was his name, Elijah, Micah, and wh where was it, I'm, who I'm thinking of? Malachi, is Malachi. He came to us in Pence, uh, uh, Missouri and came up to us, a young prophet. How old was he, five, six, came up and said, I said, are you a prophet of the Lord? He said, no, but I want to be. And by the next day, and by the next day, and he called me across the parking lot, remember, was walking in the church, remember, and he said, Robin D. Bullock. And, and huh? Oh, he ran to me. Robin D. Bullock. And he said, I, uh, I'm your biggest fan. I said, no, uh, I am your biggest fan. And I started talking to him, ministering to him. And he came up the next night, and I said, Are you a prophet of the Lord? He said, I am. He's a prophet. Yeah, I told him about that. It was two little girls sent pictures with their staff. God is raising up a generation of prophets. He's raising them up, you know, from, from just birth. I mean, in the womb, he's calling them. And they're coming forth. And they're going to be, uh, there's going to be an army of prophets before this is over. Hallelujah. I see they'll begin to say things over him. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today to the 11th hour. You're our partners. We love you so much. I'll be praying over you today. Know that wherever you go today, if it's night where you are, wherever you are, prayers are going out for you today. They'll go up to heaven. You're never without prayer if you're a partner with this ministry. Amen. Go to the website. Take advantage. Robin D. Bullock, take advantage of the products there. Let them bless you. If you became a believer today, you, you made Jesus your Lord, download the book, Jesus, Why It Is the Way It Is. Get that. It's free. Take advantage of those things. Get the book, God is Absolutely Good, and begin to reprogram your thinking with the absolute goodness of God. Amen. Until next time we gather together right here around God's Word, I want you to remember, 